Hi folks, hope you're okay today, it's good to be with you. My name is Jason Burns and we're looking at Doubting Thomas and on the resurrection. For those who don't know, I specialize in the apologetics of the resurrection. This is a sermon, but there are many, many um, talks that I've done on the resurrection. So just type in Jason Burns, the resurrection, and you'll find loads of material all over the internet on that subject. But we're going to be looking at a passage in John chapter 20, verse 24 to 31. So if you'd like to turn to your Bibles. And let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you today and we confess our sin and we confess our failure and the weakness of our hearts. And Father God, I give you the praise and the glory today. And Father, I just pray as we read your word and as we look at your word today that you would bless us and encourage us and minister to us today, Lord, and help us to come to know you and trust you. And so, God, I pray for those who do not know you today. May they come to know you and be saved. And those who do know you but may be doubting, I pray that you bless them through this message by the power of your Holy Spirit. And I pray this message will be a blessing to many thousands of people. I ask this, Lord, in your name and for your glory. Amen. So if you'd like to turn to your Bible, and uh, we're going to look at John chapter 20, verse 24 to 31. It says, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. After eight days again his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither my finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said unto him, Thou Thomas, because thou hast seen me, and thou hast believed, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that believing you might have life through his name now in the modern world there is a lot of skepticism concerning the resurrection of Christ. The great philosopher, British philosopher David Hume says, upon the whole then it appears that no testimony for any kind of miracle has ever amounted to a probability, much less a proof. David Hume. It's interesting to note that uh, David Hume, just as an aside, did investigate miracles once with a specific criteria and concluded that there could be miracles but then went on to say even though the evidence did seem to be there were miracles in the time of Pascal uh, he still was still skeptic skeptical skeptical uh, Ralph Rudolph Bultmann says the resurrection is not an event of past history um, Paul Van Buren says as historians and indeed as a proper uses of the English language we would prefer not to speak of the Easter event as a fact at all not in the ordinary sense, ordinary sense of the word and Rudolf Bultmann again said the resurrection of Jesus cannot be a miraculous proof by which the skeptic might be compelled to believe in Christ so with all these various scholars throughout the ages that have argued against the Christian faith and the resurrection how do we know that the Christian faith is true in the area of the resurrection. Well, if you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 14, it says, 
The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. It has to be said, first of all, that no amount of evidence can convert or can convince anybody. Unless God opens your eyes spiritually, unless you see the spiritual truth and significance of the resurrection, you will never believe. Some people see the truth and some people don't. And it's because God has opened some eyes and he's left others blind because of their pride and indifference to the truth. If we turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 22 to 25, we read, Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, by wonders and signs which God did among you through him. As you yourselves know, this man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Acts chapter 2, 22, 24. In Acts chapter 2, 32, it says, God has raised Jesus to life, and we are witnesses to the fact. What we're seeing here is that the early church preached the resurrection of Christ, a literal physical resurrection. Acts chapter 17, 18. A group of Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to dispute with him. Some of them asked, what is this Babylon trying to say? Others remarked, he seems to be advocating foreign gods. They said this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. In 1 Corinthians 15, 15, it says more than that. We are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. And 1 Corinthians 15, 17, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you can test, confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will believe. So contrary to modern thinking and modern understanding and skepticism, the New Testament unashamedly preaches the resurrection of Christ. Now there are only three conclusions here. Either there is evidence for this, that Christ rose from the dead, either the disciples were deluded or either they were lying. Now the lying hypothesis is put aside. There is no way you're going to lie about the resurrection and allow yourself to be killed for a lie. The James was thrown off the temple and killed. Peter was, as tradition has it, was hung upside down. They're not going to die for a lie. So the only other option is this was true or they were deluded. Now here's the point. They were not deluded. And this is the point. That if you study the text before us, the text that I've just showed you. It's very clear that the disciples knew the difference between a ghost and a resurrection. I'll say that again. They knew the difference between a ghost and a resurrection. Look, look go and read the language of the text that I quoted to you. They preached a physical resurrection. And that shows you they were not deluded. You see... As in Jewish theology generally, if there was going to be a resurrection, it was going to come at the end of time. Now, it was a strange thing for them to, to see a resurrection taking place before the end of time. But in Jewish theology, generally speaking, there was a variety of different understandings of the resurrection. But there was certainly an understanding that it would be a physical resurrection. And so my contention is that the early church knew quite di clearly the difference between a physical resurrection and a delusion that something that they saw a ghost or something like that. They knew the difference because their theology, their culture had a teaching of physical resurrection principally. Various nuances, but nothing like um, a ghost uh, coming up from the dead. Um, in the last days, etc.
So let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 8. Though you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you have seen him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexplicable, uh, inexpressible and glorious joy. 1 Peter 1 8. For the early church, the resurrection was life, it was joy, it brought them blessings. Matthew chapter 8 verse 10, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such faith. And they found the reality of Christ's resurrection and all that Christ said because, and here it is, they had faith. They believed the promises and the evidence that God provide, provided. In the testimony of the resurrected Christ, Professor Herman Bavink says, In the resurrection of Christ, it was proved that there was a man who could not be contained by death, could not be ruled by Satan, by the power of corruption, who was stronger than the, than the grave and death and hell. Professor Herman Bavink. Now, what we have in the Doubting Thomas story is really evidence of the resurrection. Why would you put, if you were trying to advance that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, you would not put within the text people who doubted the resurrection, who were on your side. You wouldn't do that. So this is honest writing, it's fair writing. And we read now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his, his hands and put my finger in his nails and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. John 20, 24, 25. Doubting Thomas was an empiricist. He wanted empirical evidence for the resurrection of Christ and um, <clears throat> unless he saw it for himself he was not going to believe it but we have the testimony of the disciples and I believe that we can trust the testimony of the disciples that these kind of stories ring true now there might be difficulties in trying to harmonize these stories if you go to a Christian think tank the resurrection and the harmony of, of the resurrection stories at Christian Think Tank, you'll get information about that. I want to talk about five things today. Number one, we see God does not treat us like robots. Number two, we see what the strongest evidence is for Jesus' resurrection. Three, we see the gentleness of Christ. Four, we see that Jesus was God in the flesh. And five, we see we need to believe in Jesus Christ ourselves. First of all, God does not tr treat us like robots. Do you remember the Daleks? And they were doing their, you know, I am a Dalek, and they all kind of have the same kind of voice. Well, God doesn't treat us all the same. He treats us in different ways. For the other disciples, they believed. Even though they doubted, they believed. But for Thomas, he needed a really upfront close look at Jesus to deal with his doubt yeah and God knows each individual person how one person gets converted will be different from another and so and this is important because there are many people leave the church because the church treats it treats people like robots often it's people in the church who are skeptical or skeptics in the church who who maybe are asking questions and doubting will be fobbed off by the elders of the pastors and said just be quiet we, we don't want to answer your questions or they'll give them pat answers and, and not be really listening to the people who were asking the questions but Jesus the Lord treats doubting Thomas as an individual listens to his problem listens to his doubt and deals with it accordingly and if you are honestly intellectually seeking God and really wanting to know him and you have doubts and God will deal with your specific doubts. He will treat you as an individual and not as a robot. Secondly, we see the strongest evidence for the Christian faith. Many people will say that they don't believe that miracles can happen. 
but this is dogmatic science cannot tell you whether miracles can happen or not science can only investigate phenomena in John chapter 20 27 it said then he said Thomas put your finger here and see my hands reach out your hand and put it into my side stop doubting and believe now if we are going to find out whether this is true we have to investigate it we can't just say that miracles don't happen therefore Jesus didn't rise from the dead because science doesn't say that ultimately science has to be open to phenomena and investigate any evidence that's presented this is evidence now we have to investigate it whether it's true or not now what we have here are four Gospels these four Gospels tell us about the life of Jesus it's kind of like having four pieces of paper by four uh, officers in the British Army during the First World War at the Battle of the Somme and they write on each of the letters a bit about the battle if you've got four sources that tell you something about a battle from different angles that's really good evidence that that's a historical event and that's what we see in the Gospels these four Gospels line up and tell us about the story of Jesus Christ the other thing about these Gospels is their naturalness and straightforwardness notice in the story about about Thomas it, it's so natural and straightforward there's nothing complicated there's nothing elaborate about it if this was false there would be all manner of elaborations in the style making more of it making a big deal out of it but it's just natural plain as if it's incidental and then we look at the, un the unintended detail the unintended detail for example when you look at the detail of the resurrection accounts you find that the woman go first why would the woman go first why would you put women first in your account because if you if it wasn't true you wouldn't do that you just wouldn't do that because it wouldn't sell to the ancient world that your religion is founded on the testimony of women women's testimony was not respected in Jewish law and there was some kind of stigma in the ancient law courts concerning uh, women in, in the wider community in John 20 25 27 but he said to, to to him unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side I will not believe it a week later his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them through, through the doors were locked and Jesus came and stood among them and said peace be with you then he said to Thomas put your finger here see my hands and stop doubting and believe the Lord in a way was rebuking Thomas that he should have believed even without putting his finger in but yet God Christ was gracious to him I just want to say that if you truly seek Jesus if you truly seek him and listen to the to the evidence and listen to the life of Christ and what he offers you you will find peace you will find him and you will come to know him but you've got to be willing to believe if the evidence comes your way St. Augustine says I was asking myself the questions weeping all the time all the while with the most bitter sorrow in my heart when all at one I heard the song of a child in a nearby house where it was the voice of a boy or a girl I cannot say but again and again interrupted 
it said take it and read take it and read that this had looped up thinking and uh, and then he, he talks about how he he went and read some of the New Testament and St. Augustine got saved but he was willing to search for God he was willing to seek for God and Thomas was willing to go to God he was willing to go to Christ and seek him next we need see the need to believe in Jesus ourselves John in the book of John Gospel of John it says then Jesus told him because you have seen me you believe blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed at the end of the day you're not being asked to believe in a scientific theory you're being asked to believe in a person either either the person the words of Jesus are words to be trusted or they are not if you believe in Jesus and what he says you will find forgiveness and peace John McDowell says I believe in Jesus Christ today can have the complete confidence as did those first Christians that his faith is based not on myth or legend but on the solid historical fact of the empty tomb and the risen Christ and then we see the gentleness of Christ he said then he said to Thomas put your finger here see my ha hands reach out your hand and put it into my side stop doubting and believing Christ treated Thomas in a gentle way and maybe you're struggling maybe you're full of guilt maybe you're worried that maybe God will not accept you but he will he's a gentle God and then we see that uh, JC Ryle says our God has many weak children in his family many dull pupils in his school many raw soldiers in his army many lame sheep in his flock yet he bears with them all and cast none away and finally we see Jesus is God in the flesh when Thomas met Jesus and put his hand his, his finger in the side of Jesus he said Thomas said to him my Lord and my God John 20 28 well you might not meet the physical Jesus but you can know the real Jesus because of the testimony of the New Testament because of the disciples of bear witness of who Jesus is and what Jesus did and the question is will you bow the knee and say my Lord and my God will you trust him and believe in him it says in the Word of God the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin and Christ shed his blood for you and gave his life for you on that cross and you can know forgiveness today you can know mercy today and grace today if you will trust in Jesus Christ It says in a hymn where Jesus reigns there is no fear no restless doubt no hopeless tear no raging sea no tempest dread but quietness and calm instead in John 26 verse 30 31 Jesus did many other miracle signs in the presence of his disciple which are not recorded in this book but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that you believing you may have life in his name John 26 30 31 you're invited today to a relationship with Jesus Christ to know him 
as your Lord and Savior. He wants you to come to him today and to trust in him. That's what he wants for you today. All the evidence you need is provided in the testimony of the disciples. The simplicity of the story shows that it's not fabricated. The honesty of the story, telling about someone who's doubting, shows you the historical truth of the story. And so, my friend, we encourage you today to put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and believe on him. Don't forget, check out, there are many, many videos around on the internet on the resurrection of Jesus by Jason Burns. Have a look at them. And may God bless you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for today and for your love and your grace and care. We give you the praise and the glory and the honor today, and we acknowledge your greatness and your love. And so, God, we pray that you be with us now and bless us in Jesus' name. May those who do not know you come to trust in you, and those who doubt, may they find your grace and your love in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to look at a video on doubt, type in Gary Habermas, Dr. Harry Gary Habermas, on doubt. And that will be a very helpful video for you to watch. And uh, go to Labrie Fellowship on the internet and they will help you uh, to deal with your doubt if you have doubts. Thank you for listening and God bless you.